Wow. I'm Mitchell from Australia, and this is Matthew Weathers, our brand new flat earther. Now, what he doesn't need is more subscribers at almost 600,000, but what he does need is some cool flat earth comments on his YouTube page. So let's all welcome him to flat earth. Welcome to flat earth, Matthew Weathers. Because his latest video is a cracking flat earth video outlining all our strongest arguments and he does a great job of it. Although I do have to correct him on some things. Let's review it. Did you know that the earth is flat? Wait, what? Why would you say that? There's no curvature, it's not spinning, and space is fake. But it's the 21st century. Are there still people who say that the earth is flat? Yes, yes there are. Do they have any evidence? They do. Today, I'll describe that evidence and some of the other ideas of the modern flat earth movement, and then tell you what the typical mainstream science or Glober responses are. Who are these people that actually say the earth is flat? I'll start by telling you who they aren't. They're not people just pretending to believe or trolling the internet just for fun. They really are sincere when they say that the Earth is not a globe. They're also not part of the Flat Earth Society, which started in 1956 and probably had less than 4,000 members at its peak in the 90s. Instead, this video will be about people in the current Flat Earth community who generally congregate on social media like Discord, Facebook, YouTube, and to a lesser degree, maybe Instagram and Twitter. They've also had a couple of conferences. This is a fairly recent movement, with most of them joining the Flat Earth community within the past few years, like 2014 or later. Okay, so what's the evidence for Flat Earth? Here are three points commonly cited. One, no curvature measured, so it's flat. Two, no rotation measured, so it's non-spinning. And three, the vacuum of space is impossible. Instead, there's a dome that holds in the air pressure. No dome needed, just containment. In order to present these arguments as fairly as possible, I'm going to play you some audio clips to let them speak for themselves. You don't have a measurement or curvature, ever, in history, by anyone. We would need when, where, and how it was done. You don't have detection of any rotation, and space as you think of it cannot exist. If you have an acumen with these three arguments, you can defeat the highest of their spinning ball space monkey priests. You'll reduce them to blubber. Let's look at each of these three arguments in detail. First, the Earth has no curvature. There is no measurable curvature. It's never been measured or demonstrated anywhere on the Earth. There's no convexity of the surface. The model that was given to us, it's been shown time and time again not to be accurate. It doesn't line up with reality. We have dozens and dozens of observations that demonstrate uh, the curvature rate being falsified. So they say not only has curvature never been measured, but you can see farther than you should be able to if the surface were curved. For example, here's an image they call the black swan, which is a still image from a video taken at a height of one foot above the ocean surface. Since the horizon is visible behind those oil rigs, the Earth cannot be a sphere with a radius of 3959 miles. At best, you would have disproved the radius of the Earth. You would have disproved the radius of the Earth. Why is it called the black swan? It comes from this idea. If someone says all swans are white, you can disprove that by showing just one black swan. Similarly, to disprove the globe model, a single image that contradicts it is enough. We falsified it with the black swan. The horizon is actually 10 times farther than it should be. Based on the radius, this photograph is physically impossible. Next is rotation. We know the Earth isn't spinning because we don't feel it rotating, and rotation has never been measured. I now claim to be able to prove conclusively that we are living on a stationary Earth and enjoying the multitude of benefits of a traveling sun. We can also use lack of Coriolis effect on airplanes like this. If the Coriolis effect is true, and we know it is, and if the Earth is rotating, then the Charlotte to Los Angeles flight at an airspeed of 500 miles an hour must be 1.5 hours. Must be. It's not and never will be. Ergo, the Earth is not spinning. Done. Zero. Nada. The third argument is that the vacuum of space is impossible. The idea of the atmosphere of Earth being next to the vacuum of space is a violation of the second law of thermodynamics, so space doesn't exist. Anything from space is a second law of thermodynamics violation. Space is claimed to be a vacuum, and the air we breathe here on Earth would absolutely 
increase in entropy, and fill the available space. Therefore, there is some kind of dome holding in the air. Once again, no dome needed. Just containment, Matthew. So we have gas pressure around us that we breathe. Didn't you know the necessary antecedent for gas pressure is a closed container? Although if you want to get technical, space is nothing more than a concept, so it can't be real in the sense of physical reality. It's literally an idea of an area, which dimensions, which is how we measure physical matter. So when there's not any matter there, it's just a description known as another concept. So we're going to conceptually describe a concept, and then, you know, in clown world of heliocentrism, actually apply physical properties being bending and warping to this concept that we describe with other concepts. There are a lot more than these three. In fact, one of the early catalysts of this modern movement is Eric Dubé's two 200 proofs video and later a book. Now Matthew could have just stopped here and it would have been an awesome flat earth video but he wanted to go further and play devil's advocate. But unfortunately cognitive pain kicks in so I'm going to have to correct him on most of his points. But I'll start with just these three. First mainstream science says that curvature can be observed. Well, you have yeah, this point this quite well, Matthew. We see this is now what be at six Earth curve. I'm claiming what every single Globern here claims. The Earth curvature it's not the horizon, right, not Earth please. curvature. Nathan, this observation looks the same every single day. The weather has nothing to do with it. And every time you see the horizon, you're actually seeing the geometric horizon. We are not going to see the geometric horizon. No one's claiming that we see physical geometry. It's not a visual horizon. And every time you see the horizon, you're actually seeing the geometric horizon. How horizon is the one that you see? And the geometric one is the one we don't see, because if we don't see it, it's not a horizon. It's not a visual horizon, but it is So we don't visible. see it, oh, so it's so not a horizon. Not a horizon. <laughs> you are correct. We do not observe geometric horizon. Welcome to Flat Earth. Changed by refraction. Do your eyes always tell geometric truth? The short answer to that last question is no. You couldn't make this stuff up. Although we sometimes can see farther than expected, that's because images can be distorted by the atmosphere depending on the weather conditions, especially right next to the water. This time lapse shows how much things can change over the course of just a few hours. So it's hard to measure anything useful right near the horizon, especially directly over water. Remember, we're talking about very slight differences here. If light bends over a curve even just 0.01 degrees per mile, a curved surface can look perfectly flat. In the black swan argument, flat earthers are saying that since light doesn't bend enough, it's impossible on a globe. But globers are saying that if light bends even just that 0.01 degrees per mile, that would explain the picture. So if the black swan picture is explained by saying the horizon is refracted, then we don't actually ever see a physical Earth curve, right? At best, you would have disproved the radius of the Earth. And anyway, it seems to me that flat Earthers would need light to be bending to explain sunsets over the ocean. Next, flat earthers say we don't feel rotation, and they are correct. But that's because Earth is rotating so slowly, at a rate of 0.000696 RPM. Yes, that translates to more than a thousand miles per hour at the equator, but remember, we humans cannot sense speed, we can only feel acceleration and room. We can also use lack of... And the other rotations around the Sun and around the galactic core are even less of a factor. So if we never observe Coriolis in balloons, in helicopters, and in drones, where can we observe Earth-based Coriolis? Well, some would assert that the celestial bodies are not moving. It is the Earth moving under celestial bodies, like the Sun, the Moon, and the stars. They aren't rotating. It's the Earth rotating underneath them, right? So, if we observe these things, the sun, the moon, and the stars, which are already in the inertial reference frame, from the inertial reference frame, they should never, ever move. Because it's the Earth turning under them that's making them move, right? 
but this view is from a drone in the inertial reference frame viewing the sun which should also be in the inertial reference frame. This sun should never ever observe to move. But as you can see the drone gets higher and the sun disappears. This is because the sun is actually moving, not the earth underneath it. This globe will never spin again. You and your, you and your reference frames have been ruined. Finally, what about air pressure? Again, flat earthers are correct about pressure requiring a container, but only on small scales. On large scales, the weight of the air causes atmospheric pressure with no container required. Ah, nice point. But how do you weigh air, Matthew? Ah, a container, that's right. You can verify this by measuring pressure gradients. At sea level, pressure is 101,325 pascals, but if you go up just eight and a half meters, about three stories high, it decreases to 101,223 pascals. That's a change in pressure of 102 pascals with no container in between. Well, the same thing happens much higher. At an altitude of 50 kilometers, the pressure is only 100 pascals. Going from there to a hard vacuum is also a change in 100 pascals. So if you don't need a container between 0 and 10 meters, why do you need one between 50 kilometers and higher? It's the same pressure differential. So Matthew describes a gas pressure gradient. And how do you have a gas pressure gradient? You need gas pressure in the first instance which in all cases needs containment. I like to use this analogy. How do you make grapes into grape juice? Well, you have to squeeze them. You put them into a container and squeeze. So you may think that a container is necessary for making grape juice. That's usually true, but there is another way. You could make a big pile of grapes on the ground, and as the pile grows bigger and bigger, eventually it will weigh so much that the grapes on the bottom will be squeezed and you'll get grape juice without using a container. It's somewhat similar with atmosphere. The weight of the air causes higher pressure at the bottom. Ah, uh, no, nah, he said it. He's gone full globe, Todd. Gas go down, go squash other gases underneath it. Like many before him, he's comparing bonded solids like grapes and semi-bonded liquids like grape juice to unbonded gases, which expand freely and rapidly in all directions. All his good work has just been undone by this stupid statement. So, a container is not the necessary antecedent for pressure. Well, we're talking specifically about gas pressure. Let's see what NASA has to say about that. The molecules of a gas are in constant random motion and frequently collide with each other and the walls of any container. Amondon's law, Charles's law, Boyle's law, Avogadro's law, and Dalton's law all require a container. If you don't have a container, you're in violation of each and every one of these natural laws that we observe always. Gas does not expand in all directions exactly equally. There's a slight bias in the downward direction due to the weight of the air, and that's enough to create atmospheric pressure without a container. Ah, this is why Matthew wanted gas go down, go squash other gases. Doesn't work, mate. This violates all gas natural laws and is not reality. Furthermore, calling atmospheric pressure a violation of the second law of thermodynamics is just a misunderstanding of that law. ...by NASA, the entropy of gas, or the second law of thermodynamics, is being violated here. Also, ideal gas law, PV equals RT. And I'd also like to point out to you that that V is a volume. To have gas pressure, it is a necessary antecedent to have a container, which is defined as the volume. No container, no gas pressure. Some flat earthers will also define science in such a way to include only experimental science, not observational sciences like astronomy, marine biology, or paleontology. And the scientific method, the independent variable, is the cause has to be able to manipulate the effect. That's what you observe. According to this, astronomy isn't even a science because the researcher isn't manipulating an independent variable that causes some effect to happen. I would say if your definition of science doesn't include astronomy, that's more of a problem with your definition. No. From the Office of Research Integrity, 
In experiments, a researcher manipulates an independent variable to determine if it causes a change in the dependent variable. From libguides.usc.edu, the independent variable refers to the condition of the experiment that is systematically manipulated by the investigator. From sciencing.com, the independent variable is the variable the scientist is actively changing over the course of the experiment. From Boston College, notice that the manipulation of an independent variable must involve the active intervention of the researcher. So I'd say it's more of a problem of astrology being pseudoscience than the definition. What about evidence for the spinning globe theory? Now this video has mostly taken a look at evidence for flat earth with some common responses. And I don't want to go into a lot of detail here, but flat earthers generally do have responses for most of these kinds of evidence. Here's a quick sample. Here's a picture from outer space giving evidence for the earth being a globe. Well, that's CGI. Okay, fine. Here's a picture from 1972 before CGI existed. They faked it some other way. Okay, well here's eyewitness testimony from the Apollo astronauts. Apollo was a Greek god. Those astronauts are lying. See, they look kind of tired and don't look nearly as happy as I think they should be. Um, I don't know how you could tell. Also, here are some parents that don't look sufficiently sad about what happened. Stop, we're not going there. GPS works in the middle of the ocean. No, it doesn't. Yes, it really does. Well, even if it does, the signal comes from balloons or ocean buoys or cell towers. Gravity naturally forms things into spheres. If the Earth were flat, gravity would draw everything toward the center. Gravity is fake. Then why do things fall? Density and buoyancy. A 24-hour sun is visible in December in Antarctica, which doesn't seem to fit your model. We don't have a model. Okay, but what about the 24-hour sun? That's a lie. It doesn't happen. But here are some videos showing it. Those are faked, or maybe run in reverse. What about the constant angular size of the sun during the sunset? If the sun were moving away from us over a flat plane, shouldn't it get smaller? It does get smaller. Here, look at this video. No, that's just glare. You need to use a solar filter. I've never seen it getting smaller when setting. Well, if it doesn't get smaller, that's because the atmosphere is too dry or too wet or because of atmospheric lensing that keeps it the same size. And anyway, stop looking up at the sky. So quit asking us how the sky works. When the floor is flat, you can test it. And on it goes. I find each of these responses insufficient. Therefore, I say it's most rational to believe that the Earth is indeed rotating and that it's roughly spherical in shape. <laughs> Did you know that the Earth is flat? Wait, what? Why would you say that? There's no curvature, it's not spinning, and space is fake. But